few weeks ago, a friend dropped off a baler shaft uh, that, let's just say, had been neglected. And he needed the shaft remade with uh, woodruff keys on each end and a, a half moon cutout for a bolt to pass through uh, for the components to tighten down. A woodruff key is a finely machined half moon metal piece used to connect a rotating component to a shaft. The distinction of the woodruff key from traditional square keys is that it is machined to fit into a semicircular pocket which eliminates the necessity of cutting or milling a keyway the length of the shaft, greatly increasing the strength of the shaft. It was patented by W. N. Woodruff of Connecticut in the late 1800s. In addition to the patent filing, in 1888, Mr. Woodruff was awarded the John Scott Medal by the Franklin Institute for the invention that would forever be known as the Woodruff Key. Woodruff keys come in a variety of sizes, from small to large. For today's shaft, we'll be using a number 808, and each size has a corresponding cutter that matches the number. We'll be using an 808 cutter. The Woodruff key numbers indicate nominal key dimensions. The last two digits give the nominal diameter in eighths of an inch and the digit preceding the last two give the nominal width in 30 seconds of an inch. In the case of the number 808, the last two digits, 08, indicate that it is 8 eighths, or one inch in diameter, and the eight preceding indicates that it is 8 30 seconds of an inch, or one quarter of an inch wide. This is the 808 key seat cutter that we'll be using today. It's made of high speed steel, but it's also available in carbide tipped. The key seat cutter is a plunge miller, and because of clearances, it will have a reduced shank in order to make the full depth of the key seat. The reduced shank makes them relatively fragile and subject to breakage, so care must be used that the feeds and speeds are correct. Key seats have traditionally almost always been cut on manual machines where the machinist has a little bit of feel uh, over the cut. Today we'll be programming it in Fusion 360 and I want to note a few special features in the programming when you do this. Draw your key seat as a slot with enough length that you can create a path for your key seat cutter to follow in your machining. Your overall depth of the key is going to be dependent upon the shaft diameter. To calculate that, you'll need to figure out the radius portion. The formula I was taught was to square the key width and divide it by four times the bar diameter. I'm gonna take quarter inch, the uh, key width, and square it, and then divide that by 4, and then multiply that times the bar diameter 1 inch, and it gives me 15.6 thousandths. I rounded it up to 16 thousandths and plugged it into my equation to calculate the uh, keyway depth. The 308 thousandths plus 16 thousandths is my total depth. The 308 thousandths comes from the table in the machinery handbook. I then extruded the Woodruff key seat and the bolt clearance slot on the bar and mirrored it to both ends. Now for a quick tip. Working with long shafts in Fusion 360, uh, you may find that it's easier to pan and zoom if you shorten the shaft. Here I've divided it by 10 to bring the shaft down to just one-tenth of its original length. You can, of course, return it to its original length by simply modifying the variable, in this case 44 and a half inches. In the manufacturing section of Fusion 360, I'm going to program a slot command to cause the key seat cutter to come into a specific depth, and then I'm going to tell it to repeat the finish pass 
which will cause it to retract to its entry point before exiting. It's very important that we repeat the finish pass to prevent a crash. I checked the simulation and everything looks perfect. If you forget the checkbox, you will likely break the cutter and ruin your work. Due to the length of the end mill I had and the stick out on the bar, I chose to go with a helical pocketing operation to minimize uh, deflection. I started by placing the bar in the vise with a set of uh, V-blocks and then set the stick out using the stop lock gauge. After roughly leveling the bar, I used the height gauge uh, to compare the two ends of the bar and used the machinist jack to bring it into level. I then used a V-block on the bar and set it to level using a set of gauge blocks. This is going to provide me with a reference when I flip the bar so that the keys on each end of the bar are in plane with each other. This is the final setup and ready to be milled. It should be noted that the second vise with the aluminum jaws, um, the bar simply passes through that vise. It's not clamped. This is the milling of the key seat in real time. And you'll see the tool comes down to height and then goes directly into the work. I did forget to align the coolant, and I hate to do that. And then it comes in, makes the cut, and then it will come back out and, re and lift the tool. Checking the fit on the uh, key. The bar was then flipped end for end, and the gauge blocks were used uh, to set it to the same plane, and the uh, second end was cut. Of course the first key cut just fine and the second one uh, promptly broke the tool off and I suspect it was due to uh, me being uh, just a little bit aggressive at two thousandths per tooth and so I turned it down to a thousandth per tooth second one cut fine and here's the shaft ready to go back on the machine thanks for watching